So let's get into it. You click on this video because you want to know about how to hold your pick. In my opinion, the best way to hold a pick is like this. You sort of do the Bill Clinton soft point politician like, like that. Hold it like this, close your fist, put the pick in there kind of as you would. And the reason I like this is because it eliminates any sort of externality that could hit the strings. When you're playing guitar and you're playing passages, you don't want anything to hit a string that you don't want to hit. The ultimate goal when playing with a pick is to be able to hit the note that you want to hit when you want to hit it, and you want it to sound how you want it to sound. And in my opinion, the best way to do that is to close your fist and to play like this. Here is one example that will show you what it looks like to play with a closed fist. This is in basic A major scale. All I do is just rest my forearm on the guitar. Sometimes in, sometimes in certain cases, my forearm's not even touching the guitar. But I rest my forearm on the top of the guitar and I just play. Now it takes time to build speed. What you have to do is you have to go through every single note you play it as clean as you can in a way that feels the most comfortable. And then you move on to the next note, you move on to the next note. You play A as best you can, then you move on to B, then C sharp, then D, E, F sharp, G sharp, A. How does that feel? How does that feel in your muscles? How does it feel here? One thing I will say, this is sort of a, a little bit of a detour. One of the reasons that I like playing with a closed fist is because it adds resonance to your hand. See, if you have your fingers all open like this, all the energy is gonna be kind of going out of your fingers and you're not gonna feel the note as well as if you balled your hand up like this and all the resonance energy sort of stays here. And you're gonna get a much better sense of how the note feels and you're just gonna feel it more in your body. It's the same concept as if you get a bass guitar and you hit a low E note, hold it close to your body, you feel the note sort of in your head and in your bones, and then if you take it away, hold it outside of your body and play it, you don't hear it as well. It's the same note, but sort of more localized and on a smaller level. So that's a detour, we're gonna get back to it. And the thing that I love about playing um, with your hand closed is that it doesn't limit where your hand can be when you're playing guitar. Once you take your fingers off the body and you just play like this, you can play anywhere you want to. If I was playing like this and I played a scale, I can do it. You can do it. You can do it, but you have to stay wherever your hand is. If I wanted to start up here, I can do that because nothing's stopping me. That's the thing that I love about this. Again, you just have a simpler sense of where your hand is because the thing is, you know, each finger is very sensitive and your brain is registering all the feelings that your fingers are taking in. And so if your hands are sort of flapping about, your subconsciously your brain's gonna be registering where that is. And so if you have your hand clamped up, sort of turned off, essentially, the only thing your brain is gonna be recognizing is what this is doing. And it allows you to just be more focused. The last example that I'm gonna use is string skipping. If you're playing something like this. The key to this is really, again, going slow, and going clean, figuring out what it feels like to move in the various strings. How does that feel, the distance between each note? You know, it's not rocket science, it just takes time. But I, I encourage you to try it. I, I have a feeling that you will at least see what I'm talking about, even if it's not for you. I've become a much better player as a result of it. I feel that my accuracy has, has gone through the roof. It's all about maximizing your ability to make musical choices in the moment, spontaneously, unconsciously, and not have anything holding you back. That's the, that is the main reason for this. I like doing guitar tutorials. I like digging into the nuanced elements of guitar. I think that's not covered enough and I want to cover these simple things that you might not have thought about or you might not have thought about in this way and help you become a better guitar player. The purpose of my tutorials is kind of helping the intermediate player get to be an advanced player. Because in my opinion, to go from a beginner to an intermediate player, 
it requires knowledge, you know, chord scales, things like that. But to get from an intermediate to an advanced player, it requires something more, a, a, a sense of nuance, a sense of sort of internalization and beginning to sort of feel the guitar subconsciously. That's what separates the greats from the goods. 